with the bruising on her hands and on her arm, uh, scratches on her hands, uh, indicating defensive wounds. The park ranger um, took us back to the scene and pointed us the live round uh, were, which also doesn't make sense. Um, I mean, there's, there is, what would it be an apparent bullet hole in a tree? Uh, yep. Very slow speech. She's a very happy, go-lucky, excitable person. Uh, and she, it was too slow. It was very slow. It was metered. Um, could have been done with uh, an AI type of previous recordings. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, Tough Topic. My name is Brittany. I hope everyone is enjoying their day. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in. There has been more details to come out about Micah Miller's death, and this will really make you wonder what exactly authorities and investigators have been hiding. So Micah's dad, Michael, and her sister, Sierra, went on the Law & Crime Network sidebar, and they shared some shocking details about the incidents leading up to Micah's death and the chilling discoveries that they found at the scene of the crime. But here is the thing that's most concerning for me. Micah's 911 call has now surfaced across the nation, and people are thinking it's not her at all. So her dad, Michael, says that the call didn't sound like her at all. He said she's normally happy, upbeat, and it just sounded very slow and metered. He said he also heard screaming in the background. I'm not one who tries to pick apart every little thing, but I'm pretty sure he has had some specialists come to him with a broken down um, a listen to the actual call. 911, what's your emergency? So I'm thinking there's definitely gonna be something about the call that's gonna be deeply looked into. I'm sure a lot of you may have thought the same in regards to that 911 call, because for me, it didn't sound right at all. Also, I found it very alarming that she mentioned her location but did not once mention her name. I know everybody is going through different things when you actually call for an emergency or 911. So it may just be something that she forgot to mention, but I did find that a little odd. Her dad also says that he suspects that Micah was forced to make that call. He also mentions then that he was at the scene. The park ranger says that there were multiple shell casings from her firearm, but Micah knows how to use it. Why were there three shell casings and why was there an actual bullet hole in one of the trees? He also does mention that there may have been a scuffle, which brings me to the bruises and the scratches on her actual arms. He says that the scratches were as if there was someone who actually took their fingernails and was fighting with her. And then the bruises looked like someone was squeezing her hand and it was out of defense. But get this, there was no DNA collected from her fingernails at all. No fiber analysis or anything that could have been significant to her case. Now, I'm sure most of us have watched um, forensic files and law and order and all this. So we know once you do an investigation for any type of crime or murder, they always take DNA. So as far as the alibi goes with John Paul, because I'm sure right now everybody kind of writes him off like, okay, well, he wasn't there. So someone else could have done it. He could have, could have hired someone, but her dad made a very good point. He says that there were the photographs of JP's truck from the traffic cam that sheriffs were able to get. However, he states that there were no photos of him actually in the car, in the truck itself. He also says that the windows were very tenant, so you can't just confirm that he was the one driving the truck. He also mentions about the tracker on Micah's car. So we know in the past, he has put a tracker there. That was what was one of the big fights they had when they were at the car lot. Um, she had to get her tires replaced. And then one of the attendants came to her and said, hey, you know, you have a tracker. So he was saying, you know, why wouldn't they check for a tracker on her car? Like that just doesn't make sense. That would have been a very good piece of evidence right there. He also made a point about investigators not digging deeper into why Micah's body was found 40 meters 
from the shell casings of the firearm. Let's say if this is something that she did to herself and she had a significant wound in the place described, there's no way that she could have walked that far. Her body was not carried there because of non-currents in that body of water. And at the time frame from when the police actually arrived on the scene, there was no way that her body would have drifted 40 meters. To me, this is going to look very bad on Robeson County investigators, including law enforcement and the coroner. So many steps were skipped, and now we have a cremated body. Nobody can do anything with that, but there is going to be new evidence as this case develops. But here is the crazy part. John Paul Miller is refusing to do any interviews. He's been asked on several platforms like Nancy Gray's, um, Law and Crime, News Nation, and he and his attorneys have refused. So it's like, what are you hiding? Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe to my channel so I can keep you guys updated. Don't forget to turn your notification bell on so you won't miss out. Bye for now.